seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to this Orc Tactics video with myself, 6 Plus Stevo. We are still in the vehicle category. In the last video, we looked at the truck. In this one, we're looking at the battle wagon. Comes in at 185 points, and the statistics are as follows. Movement, 10. Toughness, 10. 3 plus save, 16. Count them, 16 wounds. Leadership, 7 plus, and an objective control of 5. Very nice indeed. It also comes with a 6 plus invulnerable save, just like the truck did. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Um, a lot more expensive than the truck, but you are getting a lot more bang for your buck here. Um, so where do we start? Where do we start with the battle wagon? Because there is a lot of things to say about this thing. Um, let's start with the abilities. Core, Deadly Demise, D6. So your core is throwing out a lot more damage if this thing blows up. Um, and it has Firing Deck 22. Uh, we have Ramshackle but Rugged. Each time an attack is allocated to this model, worsen the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. Well, that's really, really tidy because it's already got the three plus save. So effectively, it's just making this thing a two plus save, really. Because um, if you're reducing the AP, yeah, you, you've effectively got a two plus save. Um, they've just sort of, they they may as well not have put that rule in and just given it a two plus save. Actually, when I think about it, um, it would have been a lot easier to do that. But you know what? Look, it's a fun, fluffy rule. Um, ramshackle, but rugged. You know, it it's cool. It's a nice ability to have. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um, it also has the war gear abilities. Ard case. Uh, add two to the bearer's toughness characteristic, but it is but it no longer has the firing deck ability. So, yeah, add two to the toughness. So it could go from a toughness ten to a toughness twelve, um, and that will make quite a lot of difference. It will increase its survivability by quite a lot, particularly against a lot of those anti-tank weaponry, um, anti-tank weapons. Because there's not a huge amount of things out there that are getting near that sort of strength. Um, and it's, yeah, so it's going to make it considerably harder to wound. But losing that firing deck ability is going to be a massive drawback. So you've got options there. You've got choices. This thing's going to be able to spit out a lot more DACA if you keep that firing deck open. Uh, especially depending on what unit you've got inside it and what guns they're packing. Um, so yeah, it will totally depends how you're going to use this thing. Really, it's the option between using this as a transport or using it as a big gun wagon, essentially. Um, and we've got away from what we did in ninth, where they had the battle wagon and the bone crusher and the gun wagon, and different data sheets for this one unit, which, I mean, we'll go into it in a minute, but personally, I think they kind of need to go back to that because I think the rulings and things and the options this are a bit messy. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the memes. Um, what else have we got? Damaged, one to five wounds remaining. So while this model has one to five wounds remaining, each time this model makes an attack, attack subtract one from the hit roll. So yeah, it's um, and that's any attack, not just shooting attacks. So it's weapon skill and ballistic skill will reduce by one. Um, that's going to really hurt its ballistic skill because it's already on a 5+. plus. So you're going to be hitting on 6s once this thing's on its last legs. Um, its weapon skill is reasonably good, but it is going to be quite a lot less effective then as well. So when this thing is damaged on its last legs, it really is going to reduce its effectiveness quite a lot. Um, and then the vehicle... the. the and then the uh, weapon options and things. What does this thing come equipped with? The model is equipped with tracks and wheels. Well, that's good because it would uh, struggle to get around otherwise. Um, 
the transport capacity. This model has a transport capacity of 22 Orcs infantry models. If this model is equipped with a kill cannon, it has a transport capacity of 12 Orc infantry models. Each Mega Armor or Jump Pack model takes up the space of two models. Uh, so, yeah, and it can transport one Gazgol Thraka, who takes up the space of 18 models, because he is a big boy. And no, he cannot go in a truck, people. Um, so, yeah, uh, and also it, it, it can't have an Ard case, a cannon, kill cannon or zap gun. Um, then it can transport Gazgol. Uh, so, yeah, quite a lot to unpack there. So, you really are facing the option, the choice here. Do you want this to be a transport or do you want it to be a big gun wagon? Mm, let's take a look at what we think would be best. So as it comes as standard, it's armed with no weapons at all. But you can equip it with either a cannon, a kill cannon or a zap gun. Um, let's just take a look. If this model is equipped with a kill cannon, it has a transport capacity of 12. Uh, okay, so the kill cannon, the big one, that's going to reduce its transport capacity. Um, the kill cannon is quite a bit better than the regular cannon, uh, or you've got the option of a zap gun. You can equip it with a lobber. Um, it can be equipped with up to four big shooters, uh, which you just would, because you just would. Give it the lobber, give it the big shooters. There's no downsides to it. Give it those weapons. You've paid for them. The model's tracks and wheels can be replaced with one death roller, um, again, there's no downsides to doing that, so stick a death roller on your battle wagons, people. Uh, and this model can be equipped with any of the following. The Ard case, which you're going to have to make some decisions on because there is a downside to that, as we just discussed. Uh, you can give it a grabbing claw and a wrecking ball, um, which, again, you're just going to do that because there's no downsides to having them. Other than possibly... The thing looking quite ridiculous, but look, it's an orc vehicle, so ridiculous is um, is an option. Uh, but let's check at these uh, weapons. We've got the big shooters. We know the stats. I'm not going to go over them again. Uh, we've got the cannon. So you've got a choice of the frag, which is a blast weapon, or the shell. Um, so the frag is D6 attacks, uh, strength 5, no AP, 1 damage, so it's a, it's a troop killer. Um, if you're firing into um, mobs of weak infantry, that's going to be a go-to. The shell only has one attack, but it's a strength 9, AP minus 2 with a D6 damage. So the cannon is uh, it's got a nice bit of punch to it. High strength, good AP, and potentially nice damage. Um, the kill cannon... Um, that is has a shorter range of 24, um, but it gets D6 plus 3 attacks. So you're getting a minimum of 4 attacks, potential 9 attacks out of this thing. Um, again, strength 9, AP minus 2, but only a flat 2 damage, not the D6 damage. So, yeah, I think the kill cannon is better. Um, I mean, you're getting 9 attacks potentially nine attacks rather than just the one but uh yeah that flat two damage possibly a little bit disappointing compared to the d6 damage of the cannon um but the kill cannon is going to be a lot more reliable you're much likely to actually hit and hurt something because one shot on ballistic skill five plus yeah it's not too hot uh you've got the lobber which is a blast weapon and indirect fire beautiful 48 inch range d6 attacks Strength 5, no AP, 1 damage. Um, again, a bit like the uh, frag cannon. Um, it's a good troop, troop killer. Um, and having that indirect fire, very, very nice. Although I think just the lobber on its own, on a big, expensive vehicle like this that's kitted out with lots of other weaponry, you're not really going to be sitting this thing behind a building firing your indirect fire from the lobber. Um, but, you know, when you're out on the battlefield and you're shooting all your other guns at one thing and there's another unit tucked behind something, it's nice to have that lob, lob shots over and, you know, annoy and harass that unit your opponent is desperately trying to hide. So it's a cool ability to have. Um, but I think it's more of like an added bonus rather than like, oh, I'm going to kick this thing out of a lobber and hide it behind a building all game and do that because that would be a very expensive way to do that. Uh, and then you've got the Zap Gun, which has the Devastating Wounds ability. So a nice uh, 
possibility of throwing out some mortal wounds. Um, only has one shot. Uh, I'm hitting on 5 plus, but it has a strength of 2d6, so a nice bit of orky randomness going on here. An AP of minus 3 and a flat 3 damage. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think it's a gun you're going to use more for fun. I think every now and again it's going to do something nasty. Uh, but most of the time I wouldn't expect this thing to, well, either hit or even if it does hit, you could have rolled really low on the strength and still get nothing out of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm not... I, you know, zap guns, they're cool looking and they're fun and fluffy, but I wouldn't expect them to do much. Every now and again, you'll get a lovely result out of a zap gun. You'll be loving life. Um, but, yeah, uh, personally, I wouldn't go for the zap gun myself. Uh, out of those three... I think I'd go for the kill cannon myself. But again, if you do that, then you're reducing the transport capacity of this thing uh, quite severely. So something to consider there. Uh, the big shooters, I would definitely equip it with all four all day long. And the lobber, again, I would always put a lobber on it because you just you just would. Uh, melee weapons. We've got uh, the tracks and wheels that it comes with. So it comes with six attacks. Hitting on 4 plus, strength 8, no AP, 1 damage. Uh, so yeah, just as standard, this thing is pretty tasty. 6 attacks, hitting on 4, strength 8, that ain't too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, but you can replace that with the death roller, which, again, you, you, you just would. There's no downside to having the death roller. Uh, so now you're hitting on 3s with a higher strength, better AP, and double the damage. So, yeah, you just would do that. And then we've got our optional extras with the extra attacks, the Grabbing Claw and the Wrecking Ball. Uh, so the Grabbing Claw gets two attacks, hits on 3+, plus, strength 8, minus 2 AP, and 2 damage. Um, yeah, that's surprisingly good. Um, yeah, the Grabbing Claw has never really been something in the past that's dished out huge amounts of damage. In fact, it's sort of done other things. I think it's sort of held on to things and stuff and uh, prevented things running away. I mean, I'm testing my memory here, trying to remember back to previous editions. But that's um, that's a that's pretty good weaponry there. I wouldn't have expected that from a Grabbing Claw. Uh, and then the Wrecking Ball is just one attack, hits on four, strength ten, no AP and D6 damage. Um, so yeah, really, really nice. You just give it the grabbing claw and give it the wrecking ball. You you, you just do because they're there and you, yeah, you just would. So yeah, um, I, I think, I personally think it's, it's a bit messy. It's a bit clunky, this data card, the way it's done. I think it was better in the last codex when they broke the battle wagon up into three separate units. Um, and you had the gun wagon and you had um, the uh, bone breaker and then the standard battle wagon. And each one came with sort of specific special rules sort of tailored for it. Um, and I think this sort of leads on to a bit of a larger problem with these data cards in 10th edition. And the thing that I really don't like um, where you don't pay the different points for the different upgrades and things you put on things. Because I think... It used to be nice in auditions where you could have a stripped back battle wagon. You know, you could just have a battle wagon armed with nothing but the four big shooters um, and not much else because you just want it to be a heavy, you know, hard transport. You want to save some points and things. Now, everyone just has to put everything on their battle wagon. Um, and like even like the death roller, you, you, you kind of... You, you, you're going to want the death roller because you want it because it gives the stat snap. Uh, and you've already paid for it, so you might as well have it. But you might not want it for like aesthetic reasons. It might not sort of fit the theme of your armies, particularly if you've gone for more of like a gun wagon. Um, for me, personally, I mean, I've got one that's been half-built for a very long time, an embarrassingly long time, and I've built it as a gun wagon. So I haven't built, I haven't built the uh, Death Roller on mine because I was playing like a Bad Moon style, so I built it as a big, heavy, hard-hitting tank loaded up with uh, Dakar. So, yeah, I, 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 look, I think, I think it's good. I think the unit is good. I think it's good at what it does. Um, I think you've got a nice bit of 
punch power in melee with this thing. You've got lots of different shooting options. Um, and I think it's uh, I think it's still, to this day, a beautiful miniature. And uh, I think battle wagons rock. But uh, I, I just think it's a bit messy. And I think they need to do something to sort of separate this out a bit. And uh, yeah, I think that's the only way they're going to get around this properly with vehicles. Um, in this new edition, as they bring the codexes out, I really hope that they do this with a lot more of the vehicles, is give you the sort of uh, multiple data cards for each one, so you can have like, you know, if you want a tank, for example, without sponsons and stuff, then you have like a sort of a, a, a basic version of that tank, but then you can choose the other data card, which comes with the options of having all these different sponsons and turrets and things on it, so you want the more expensive one with the more fancy stuff on it. And I think they should still do that. So it's still, get, if you know, if they really don't want to go back to, you know, people paying the extra points and stuff to add things on or take things off, I think that's the only way they're going to be able to do that and still give some of us players who want the cheaper option. We don't want all the bells and whistles on our vehicle. We just want the cheap, basic version of that vehicle to do, you know, its job. Maybe you just want a big, tough, hardy transport vehicle that its only job is to protect the units inside and get them up the battlefield. So you're not really bothered about putting loads and loads of DACA and extra bells and whistles on it, and you want to pay some less points for it. Hopefully they will give us options like that in the Codex. Um, but anyway, rant aside, um, what else have we not talked about with this thing? I think we've covered everything. Oh, I've been a bit rambly on this one. I appreciate that. Um, so what would I do with this thing? Well, um, it's a great way to transport um, Gazzy himself into battle if you want to do that. Um, I think it can be quite hilarious putting that giant Gazzy on the back of a battle wagon. Um, I think it's the ideal vehicle to transport mega knobs into battle, especially with the large transport capacity. You can fit a lot of them in there. You can fit two units in this thing, uh, plus characters and stuff. So it's really good for large mobs. I think like a large mob of boys with a war boss uh, and a pain boy or something in there inside this thing getting into battle would be really, really cool. Uh, there'll be a link popping up in the corner now for my boys video, which was the first of this playlist. Go and check that out. Um, but yeah, I think the battle wagon is very, very good. I think it's really cool. Um, I, I, I don't know how I would use this thing. There's so many options for this thing. I personally, just for fun and fluff reasons, I would still plan to kit mine out with a kill cannon, all the, the big shooters, uh, the lobber, and sort of sit it more at the back of the board, just f firing, dackering away with all that stuff. Um, yeah, that's probably how I'll end up using mine. Um, once I finally built the bloody thing. Um, but yeah, um, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Um, let me know how you plan to use your battle wagons and uh, what you plan to load into them. And uh, yeah, but that's it for the transports for a while because I don't want to talk more about transports. I have, I'm getting impatient now. I want to talk about something that I really like. Now look, I like battle wagons. I think battle wagons are cool, but they're not like my main love. I think it's high time I talked about something I am deeply, deeply passionate about. Um, the ultimate, the greatest vehicle, the orkiest of orky vehicles, uh, the Death Dread. It is high time we talked about these fellas. So yeah, join me on the next one, guys, as we start taking a look at Dreads and Cans. Woo! This is Six Bus Stevo, signing out.